I want to talk briefly about photo cut lines or captions. Uh, if you turn in your style book on, in the 2015 version, the page 503 has a section called photo captions. And that largely starts off with giving kind of the basics of what you need, but then it also gets into more of a technical, um, like the coding for general coatings, which we don't really deal with the Associated Press rules on that. You guys don't deal with slug lines and things. So some of that's a little bit more technical than you need. But just to give you a little bit of a heads up, because I never talked about it, but I mean, if things come through the wire service, the, the Associated Press, there is a slugging method, whereas like a feature story, usually they put like FEA and they put like news or POL for politics. And then they usually, um, every... Uh, newspaper, every news organization has a code, like, um, like for example, like Springfield would probably be like ILSP or SPIL, I forget which it would be, it would be uh, SPI, SPR, IL, SPRIL probably is my guess, um, and you know, you can have state codes and city codes, and all that basically allows for like a computer system to categorize, and then you know, when you have a system, you know, there might be 20,000 stories put out on the wire. But if you're not in Nevada, you probably don't care what happened in, you know, in Carson City this morning, you know, that the city council met and discussed, uh, you know, putting in new sidewalks. But if you're in Reno, you might actually care. And so, especially because that's kind of one of those, you know, it's one of those things that's kind of unique to your state. Maybe you have some concerns. Uh, maybe that's, you know, kind of news is local. And if something happens in Decatur or Peoria or Bloomington, or St. Louis, we tend to be more concerned than if it happened in uh, Las Vegas or uh, New York or other things. We just because we, you know, are closer to it. We have friends, we have family in those places. So that's part of that. I just want to mindly mention that on a brief note. It's not of much importance. Um, so most of that's kind of a technical, but it does, if you read that page or two, the first couple pages of that section, um, it will give details about how to write cut lines. And that's what I want to talk to you about is how to write cut lines. Cut lines are usually, or they are almost always written in the present tense. The reason why they're written in the present tense is because you're looking at a photo and you're describing what's happening in the photo. And in the photo, it is happening in the present. And so we use the present tense just as we do for headlines and other times we'll use the present tense. Whereas typically in a news story, we use the past tense. And so that's one major difference in it. Uh, there's a few minor technical things like in, when using quotations or quotation marks. Usually we use just a single quotation mark instead of a double just because single, uh, just because it takes up less space and it kind of just, you know, it just, it, you know, double quotations look a little weird. You're trying to keep it fairly short. Uh, cut lines need to be pretty short. They need to be kind of to the point. You don't want a cut line that's longer than the story. Um, usually what you do is you start off and you want to identify the people who are in the photo. You want to tell us what they're doing. You want it to be an action oriented verb instead of a passive voice. Like, uh, the dog, uh, is given, you know, the dog or, uh, the person is barked at by the dog. You'd rather write the dog barks at the person. Uh, you want it to be the dog barking, not the person is barked at by. You don't want it to be that passive construction because you're seeing something active and you want it to be that way. You want it to be present, active voice, just like in headlines or cut lines. You want it to be, uh, you want to identify all the people if possible. And that is one thing I think people oftentimes think about. They go on, they take pictures and they just take pictures. But you really do need to go up to every person you take a picture of and say, can I get your name? Can I, you know, you know, get your uh, information? Where are you from? How old are you? What are you doing here? Things like that. And you don't have to get a ton of details, but that is something that a, that a photographer does. And that's one of the things that I think makes being a photographer difficult is you're just taking a great picture and then you go over and the person's like, I don't want my picture used. And now, you know, you're kind of in a situation where you probably shouldn't use the picture if they're asking you not to use it because... I mean, what, what benefit is it? Um, I mean, if somebody's getting hurt or there's a crime or they're speaking in public, you know, that's a totally different thing. But if, you know, you're just at a, at a festival and you get a really good picture of somebody eating a hot dog or something, I mean, it's probably not, if they say they don't want to use, I would probably not use it. And so that makes it difficult. But you really should be going up to them. You should get the names of the people. You should give the location. And you should give the place, and well, location and place are the same. The what's going on, uh, identify the people, those are the key ideas. Now, all that usually comes in the first sentence. The first sentence of a cut line usually describes the photo, what's happening, where it's at, when it happened, 
things like that. The second sentence is usually connecting the photo with the larger story. Cut lines are what we call entry points into stories. Entry points into stories are places where people uh, when they're when they're looking when they're reading this they're looking they see a cool picture and then they read the cut line and then they see something interesting about the story it maybe it's you know something happened maybe it's a festival maybe it's the score maybe it's something else and that maybe gets people to go hey I want to read the story and then they go over and they read the story so cut lines are not just something to have pretty in the paper they're actually supposed to be connecting people and getting people to engage it if you're online and you see a photo on Facebook and there's like a little cut line underneath it or a little bit of information about the story that is getting you to click that link and that's exactly what a photo cut line in a newspaper online other places is supposed to be doing first one is telling you what you're seeing and the second one is telling you why this is important why we even have this here and that's usually one sentence that's going to grab something now if you're writing three or four cut lines about the same thing you may want to make sure that second sentence you don't want it to be the same in every one so suppose you go out and you shoot a a, uh, a basketball game you might want the first cut line you know you, each cut line is going to start off with the first sentence saying like jeff jones lays up the ball uh to score the winning uh the winning field goal or something like that right and then you know the next one says uh you know harry smith denies uh denies lance strongman the uh the the dunk uh in a charging incident blah 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 on tuesday in the game between uh springfield and peoria okay and so you're describing it you're getting time date place and then the second sentence uh you know it's the same the same one maybe it says you know maybe in one of them it says you know uh, Springfield won the game by four points uh, on, at their homecoming game, or maybe the next one says uh, Springfield won the game despite uh, despite a leg injury that sidelined their star player during the third quarter. Or maybe the next one says uh, Peoria struggled from the paint during today's game because of blah, blah. You know, I mean, whatever it be, you know, and you, you connect it with the ideas and the information within the story. And each cut line, if you have more than one cut line on the same story, really each of those second sentences should be different. They should be giving you a different information to get people to read the story because each one is an entry point. Now, for space, sometimes editors will cut the those second lines and sometimes they will shorten stuff but a photographer or a cut line writer should provide that this should be one sentence describing one sentence giving context the second sentence can be written in second person or in, in past tense i usually recommend keeping it in first in present tense but it kind of just you know you kind of play it by ear on that um so there are usually two sentences. Usually the sentences aren't horribly long. Uh, you can use quotes. You can use a lot of things in the second sentence. But the first sentence should always be describe the photo, name people, place, time. Okay, time, people, place. And the second one should be, you know, basically you're answering the who, what, when, where. Uh, and then the second sentence is answering that why and how question. And that's basically all a cut line is. For an assignment for this, you will are given some photos, and your job is to write a cut line. Sometimes there's people are identified, sometimes they're not. I give you a little bit of information on each one. I also suggest you Google the terms, look up additional information on it. That way you're able to write a better uh, second sentence. But that's your job. I mean, and, and a good editor, I mean, I don't know how many times when I was an editor that uh, people would turn in photos and they would have absolutely no information, uh, absolutely nothing. And I would have to sit there and I would be like, you know, after about the 10th one, I'd be like, freaking, you know, you know, because... You know, I got other things to do. My job isn't to write the cut lines. That's the photographer's job. Um, but that's about it.